Hello everybody, welcome to Dakman Productions and welcome to Conahay Rail. Today's video we're going to discuss Lionel Standard O. And what is Standard O? Lionel has sure come up with a few different terminology, words, and descriptions over the years. A lot of it can be confusing for those of you getting into O gauge. What is O gauge? What's the difference between O gauge and O scale? What is traditional? What is standard O? What's line scale? I mean, there's all kinds <laughs> of uh, terminology Lino has thrown in their uh, catalogs over the years. Now, I'm going to give you what I learned uh, myself over the time that I have gotten back into O gauge in 20. 15. So, O scale. Uh, so, <laughs> I learned the hard way what O scale, the difference between O scale and O gauge. So, I was originally calling my layout uh, O scale back in 2015, 2016. I had uh, a couple members of a club straighten me around and say, you don't have O scale, you have O gauge. So, what's the difference? So, a true O scale layout is only two rails, and that layout is scale dimensions, 148 true scale dimensions, and a true O scale layout will all be custom built. The track is hand laid, hand spiked. You put the little individual ties on, and you, and you spike the rails down, and you build your rolling stock, and you build your buildings, and a lot of it was kits or some were scratch built but that's what um, two rail high, uh, two rail layouts are it, they're just built by huge custom built layouts built by craftsmen basically which brings me to Conahay rail so that's O gauge high rail <laughs> and so there is another term, high rail, uh, and that word high rail is not used in any line out catalog or any other catalog that I know, but that is a real terminology that I found when I started visiting uh, train shows and running to clubs and they called their layouts high rail, and I learned about that. What is high rail? So high rail is a O gauge layout that's all one true 148 scale dimensions a lot of the clubs like to run uh, prototypical time period correct um, they the buildings however are most of the buildings that they use on their layouts are already built or pre-built so it's a little bit different the track most of the track that high rail layout clubs use are Atlas and Gargreys and Ross are the top three choices. Um, so on kind of hey rail, I have uh, Gargreys. And then we have traditional, and traditional is just basically it's semi scale. It's not full scale. It's not true 140 dimensions. So if you go back into the Lion catalogs, you'll see. If you read the descriptions, you'll see. Well, back in the day, a, f a few years ago, they would describe it as O scale, meaning it's a scale product, true 148 uh, dimensions. So, not to mean that it was too real, but it was kind of weird how they did it. But anyway, rate, and then traditional meaning it was uh, semi scale. Then we run into um, lion scale. <laughs> And there's another one. It's like, okay, now we threw another term in there. So what's lion scale? And lion scale is just where Lionel right bought the old weaver molds. And that became the lion scale lineup. Then you have the lion master. <laughs> How many more terms can we come up with, Lionel? <laughs> so the lion master lineup. Another older lineup, uh, the Lion Master is semi scale. It's not true scale. Finally, we get to Standard O. And what is Standard O? Wow. <laughs> well, 
So let me, uh, the best way to put standard out, it's a budget line of true skill rolling stock, if you want to call it that. Um, it was Lionel's attempt at uh, coming up with scale products but being budget friendly. Let's face it, when you have an O gauge high rail layout and you have scale trains, you really want to stick with O72 and up. Um, I tried O54 and it did not work for me, so there's your tip. Um, O54 is okay if you want to run 15 car trains and um, short rolling stock, shorter rolling stock. I, I had no luck running like an 86 foot high cube box cars or the full size scale auto racks or it just did not like those O54 curves once you started building a, a long train. It just didn't. Even though the catalog says it would run on O54, which it will, maybe one or two cars, but when you have a long train, forget it. So my suggestion is if you want a high rail layout and you want scale trains, start minimal at O72. And if you want to run 40 to 50 car trains, O80 and up. But not everybody has those the room for those large wide curves which is why traditional is so popular and the MTH Rail King lineup which is also semi-scale which will run on 036 curves and perfect for those who have small layouts standard O <laughs> line I was trying to create a best of all the worlds uh, coming up with something that was not as costly, budget minded, something that would not need to 072 or 054 on up to run on. And that's when they came up with Standard O. And it has, the, a lot of the Standard O rolling stock has these weird truck arrangements. Now most of the trucks you see have a, a pin in the center and it swivels, but <laughs> uh, in the center. But on the a lot of the standard O products, the truck has the pin on the rear of the uh, truck instead of the center of it. So it pivots at the end of the truck, making it a really weird thing to, to see. <laughs> but uh, and on the other hand, it makes it real nice to run on tight curves. So when did standard O... So when did Lion Out introduce Standard O? I tried to do research on that, and the best I can come up with is sometime in the 80s, because that's when a lot of the set uh, Standard O sets were being made or being introduced. A lot of the rolling stock was coming out Standard O, and what was nice is that originally uh, Lion Out was actually stamping the boxes which said standard O on it, but they stopped doing it. So now people when they go here's the bad part about all these different names. With the exception of, of Lion Master and Lion Scale, when it comes to the rest of it, you go into your favorite hobby shop and you're looking at all these orange boxes. You don't know what's traditional, what's uh O gauge, true scale, or what standard O anymore. Now you gotta look in your catalogs and do research if that really matters to you before you buy something. Now, for those who like to mix and match and really don't care, they wouldn't mind, you know, just going in and buying whatever without even research. But if you're if you're a person who wants to stick with, you know, the same size rail cars, then that's gonna be a problem because the boxes aren't marked, which they originally were. So, in the 80s, there was some, I thought, at any rate, cool standard O sets that Lionel introduced. I remember the Chessie set. Um, so, they would release a different set every year. Uh, starter set. 
And I remember the Chessie set uh, and that was the SD40. I think all the sets were SD40s. But um, the Chessie had all the yellow uh, two-bay hoppers in it. That was a cool set. There was quite a few sets introduced over that time period. This was the set that I really wanted, which was introduced in 1987. This is the Lionel Limited, uh, Conrail Limited set. Again, SD40 and freight cars in a caboose. This was a standard O starter set. This was a way to get started in standard O. Very cool. However, in 1987, this set was $400. Back then, that was a lot of money. It sound, doesn't sound like much now. I'm not even thinking, well, $400 is cheaper than a legacy locomotive. Yeah, well, back in 1987, $400 was probably like eight or $900 now. But <laughs> I don't have my inflation calculator with me, but I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Um, but at any rate, this was the set I always wanted. Now, you can still find these Lionel Standard O sets, the... Uh, these uh, set starter sets brand new at train shows and most of the time I see them anywhere from 280 to 350 depending on the seller sometimes you'll see them for their, or their original price back in 87 for you know, 400 bucks but you know they're still sealed they're brand new and you can still pick these up uh, Canadian Pacific I believe was another one that Lionel made as a standard O set there was quite a few different road names they came up with all featuring SD40 locomotives. The best way to describe Standard O is as far as uh, dimensions, I call it the uh, squishy dimensions because even though it's supposed to be scale, they squished it in the dimension, the true scale dimensions in one way or another, either the length or the width or the height. So we're going to do some comparisons between standard O and a scale size train which would have your true scale details and all that stuff, 148 dimensions all the way across the board. I know people are going to hate me for saying this, but even the MTH Premier and a lot, uh, some of their products are also squishy dimensions. They just shrunk it in different ways and reshaped it so it would go around their O36 curves. Such as their auto rack. It's not even close to being true scale dimensions. Now Lionel still makes standard O to this day. And in our catalog, it'll be listed as standard O. So here's a good example. This uh, Procore tank car is uh, out of the last line on catalog. If you look this up, you'll see it'll say standard O. This is their standard O tank car with the uh, more modern Procore name on it. Again, it's more of a budget line. So you're looking at around... 54, 55 to 60 bucks for a standard O uh, tank car. Now, if this was scale, uh, like the Atlas O, this would be a $90 car on up all day long. And the scale cars are just getting more expensive, the ones with all the details on it, because the Lionel scale cars are now uh, $100 and up. So when I got back in the O gauge in 2015, I remembered standard O trains. Yeah, I remember that back in, 80, in the 80s, 86, 87, seeing that. And I wanted it, couldn't afford it. So I went online, and that's how I got started back in the O gauge all over again. I got excited, got my standard O set. And I started buying standard O cars to go with it. And then I bought my first scale car. <laughs> and that was the end of that. So... Uh, I think I only ran my standard O and started collecting standard O for a year, 2015 to 2016. And once I once I seen uh, O O gauge high rail or O gauge true scale trains, uh, that was it. That's what I wanted, and that's what I started going after. 
and pretty much put all my standard oil on shelves for display. So this is the first time I'm running my standard oil trains since 2016. Wow. <laughs> That's how focused I have been on Ogeed's True Skill High Rail trains. But at any rate, here we are with the help of the Power Master. We're going to go ahead and run that because the locomotive is conventional. It has a horn, but currently this one's not working because it needs a speaker. And um, But it's a cool piece, so let's get started. Let's watch it. It runs surprisingly smooth for a something that's got an E unit in it. Uh, actually, my thoughts. So we're gonna go ahead and add the cars that I got with it and that 20 to 20, 2015 to 2016 time period. So let's go ahead and add those cars. Have some fun. So I just put the rest of my. Lionel Standard O collection onto the layout and one thing I learned when I started uh, buying Standard O from 2015 to 2016 here's a little tip I found out with the Lionel Standard O stock number series 6-17000 to 6-17999 those were all mainly standard O cars and the same goes with 6-27001 to 6-20 27 uh, I guess <laughs> and those were standard O cars as well so I did find that out uh, which made it easier so when I went to train shows I was looking for anything to start off with 6-17 and three digits after that, or 6-27 and three digits after that. So I knew those were standard O. <coughs> One of the things I noticed about the early standard O is there's nothing prototypical about it. So if you're looking for something prototypical, this is not going to be for you. I mean, most of their early runs of standard O use the stock number as the road number. So... We're going to go ahead and see if this single locomotive can pull this. Uh, I read online debates about the uh, anything with magnet traction would not work as well on nickel silver, nickel silver tracks such as guard grades. It's meant for tubular steel track. That's where we get most of its traction. But hey, we're going to see if we can pull this long train anyway. Okay, will it be a go or no go? A little FYI, Nova means no go in Mexico. That's why the Chevy Nova didn't do too well when they tried to sell it over there years and years ago. <laughs> well, so there's a little bit of car history for you. But anyway, let's uh, well, let's see what the, see if she can pull this. Grabbing. Oh, yeah. He's grabbing. That magnet traction is grabbing. Him. 
so I stopped the video run temporarily here because I am so impressed with this 1987 Lionel locomotive with magnet traction. Um, so I am using Gore Gray's track on Conahay Rail. It's nickel silver track. And so there's been debates on whether magnet traction would actually hold as well on nickel silver as it would on tubular. And this right here should prove without a doubt magnet traction works just as good on uh, Gargrade's track, nickel silver track. I mean that locomotive bit right into the track with its magnet traction and just um, it didn't even slip a wheel, didn't growl, it just grabbed a hold of that track like it was I don't know, like no tomorrow. I'm, I'm really impressed. And when you see how many cars are on here uh, you'll understand why I'm so impressed. So let's go ahead and continue with the run. So I was quite impressed with this standard air run with a single locomotive. It does have dual Pullmore motors. It is all wheel drive. Pretty powerful for something back in 1987. Uh, pretty well impressed. The uh, So everything you saw on this whole train is all standard O. Everything is standard O. That's my whole, whole standard O collection. The only thing that's missing is I had a standard O3 pack of the ADM tank cars and a standard O3 pack of the Cargill tank cars. I ended up selling them uh, for um, the better scale cars in 148 Dimensions. I sold them for uh, Atlas O, but then I decided I better not sell any more of my standard O collection because maybe one day... I may have interest in it again. Uh, there are, Lineup did make standard O Conroe boxcars. So maybe making this run may have sparked my interest to go ahead and add that to my standard O collection. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and make a comparison between uh, a couple cars so you can see the difference uh, as well as the locomotive. So again, we have in front of you is a Standard O SD40. Here we have a Lionel Legacy True Scale 148 Dimension SD40. Here you have the Standard O SD40. And right away you can see what I'm talking about as far as the dimensions and the details. Because if you look at the 
Lionel standard OSD40, a lot of molded in uh, components like the rough fans are molded in, the dimensions are all squished on it, and um, it's just nowhere near like the Lionel Legacy tree scale looking at it. So you can see a difference as far as the, the looks and stuff. I just want to show you guys that. Uh, the one thing I can say is the old school Lionel Standard O. All 12 wheels are powered with gearing. However, on the Lionel Legacy, only 8 of the 12 wheels are geared for power. So, unfortunately, uh, axle on the front truck and one axle on the rear truck are just dummy axles with no gears on them. So it would have been nice if Lionel actually made this Legacy a full 12 wheel drive unit as well, but it's not. Alright, so here we have an Atmoso 40 foot box car and the Lionel Standard O box car. They don't call it anything, 40 foot, 50 foot, or whatever, they just call it a Standard O box car. But <laughs> So I said, wow, that looks like a 40-footer, and I was right. Scale dimensional-wise, I mean, it seems to be just about on the money. Um, the uh, height is a little on the short side, but overall, uh, that goes with the squishy proportions I was telling you about. But overall, the, the length and the width seems to be right on. As you can see... Once again, the details, you don't have the uh, see-through grading. You got the molded in details at the so. Well, we all know the quality of that. You're going to have the see-through uh, grates on the top. You're going to have the separately applied uh, grab rails on it. So once again, you get to see at least a comparison between standard O 40-foot box car, well actually, uh, they just call it a box car, and an Atlas O Master Series 40-foot box car. Alright, so we're going to compare an Atlas O 50-foot box car, because to me that's the standard of scale quality, to the Lionel uh, Railbox, which is a 50-footer, just to see uh, how far off it is. And the first thing I noticed is that the, the squishy proportions on the rail box, you know, the rail box is a little bit wider than the uh, Atlas so. so again, your proportions are off a little bit. And um, as far as the details, if you look at the rail box, again, you got the molded in ladders. But you're getting it at a cheaper price point. And the Atlas O Master Series, you know, the has the uh, separately applied ladders and grab rails, much more detail. But uh, definitely not play friendly. So the standard O is more play friendly. One of the things that drives me crazy about the standard O car, so if you look at the ride height. In other words, look how close the trucks are to the body. And the ride height of the standard road box car is much, much higher. Uh, so you get more body space between the truck and the bottom frame of the box car. So that body should be sitting lower on the trucks. But again, uh, you know, it is standard O. So, you know, that's the stuff that you got to expect for, you know, for the details and the, and the price point. So I was quite impressed with the run of this 1987 uh, Lionel ST40. It, uh, it surprised me. <laughs> um, although, if I was running this long term, I wouldn't, probably wouldn't trust pulling that many cars, but who knows, maybe it'll be okay. Um... But, yeah, it's, it's a great addition to those who are looking for something that's on a budget, that wants a 
scale-ish uh, train and don't want to invest in the bigger curves. Um, not sure if it will go down to a 036 or not. But at any rate, this was a fun run. Uh, showing off my standard O collection. And uh, we'll catch you guys trackside. Goodbye.